Hey, what's up guys? As Bitcoin coming supply decreases, the demand increases and the price ultimately goes up. In this video, I will show you a few very bullish charts that Michael Saylor will explain how large sums of new capital will flow into Bitcoin. This video is presented by BlockFi. BlockFi provides financial products for crypto investors such as high yield interest accounts, USD loans and no fees trading. With BlockFi you can get up to 8.6% APY. It works with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin or stablecoins. Do you need cash? Now you do not have to sell your crypto and pay high taxes. With BlockFi you can use your crypto as a collateral to get a cash loan. Now BlockFi utilizes ACH that will enable users to connect their bank accounts with BlockFi and deposit slash withdraw funds into slash from BlockFi with no fees. Also, just recently Visa partnered with BlockFi to release a new credit card where users will receive 1.5% back with Bitcoin. Right now you can earn up to $250 of crypto bonus when you open a new account and sign up with the link blockfi.com slash aimstone in the description box below. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today. Let's start with the overall cryptocurrency market. In the past few days, the entire crypto market had a decent acceleration in price. The entire cryptocurrency market cap surpasses $1.7 trillion. Bitcoin, as of the time of this recording, surpasses $56,000. It's very close to reach its new all-time high. Just so you know guys, an all-time high for Bitcoin is at around $58,000. Bitcoin's market cap is finally once again when about $1 trillion and BTC is up by 7% for the past 7 days. Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency, shows even bigger gains. It's up by 12% for the past 7 days and once again it surpasses its milestone of $200 billion in market capitalization. The current ETH price is at around $1,844 and just to remind you guys, the all-time high for Ethereum was slightly above $2,000. So there is still a delta left to reach that new all-time high but the good thing is this market grows very fast so it can happen in any given day. Binance looks good as well. It takes third place as the most valuable cryptocurrency and it gained 13% in the past 7 days. Cardano ADA on the other hand has experienced some stagnation in the past week or so so it's down by 7% and it's very close to be flipped by Polkadot. Uniswaps shows the biggest gains in the past week out of the top cryptos. It's up by 18% and it continues go up. Let's take a closer look at the Bitcoin price. As I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin reached $56,000 as of the time of this recording. Possibly it's even higher as you're watching this video. On March 1st, BTC dropped to $43,000 and since then it had a nice recovery to the current price. It gained 30% since the beginning of the March. Back in January 2021, BTC price formed a triangle patterns. Then, within big catalyst as Tesla announced its Bitcoin purchase, BTC broke off from that triangle. Now it looks like BTC broke off from that second most recent triangle. We might see a new all-time high in the next few days as Bitcoin continues to accelerate. Bitcoin's reserve on exchanges continues to decline. It declined from the May 2020 to the current date by more than 500,000 BTC. Generally, this is very bullish signal as there is less and less Bitcoin becomes available in the liquid market. Predominantly, when we see a massive Bitcoin reserve on exchanges decline, it means that crypto custody companies, when they buy Bitcoin on behalf of their wealthy clients, they move those Bitcoins to the cold storage and therefore Bitcoin are no longer available for sale. Also, smaller retail investors moving Bitcoin away from crypto exchanges and taking self-custody by moving Bitcoin into the hardware wallets. Here is another related chart. This chart represents liquid versus illiquid Bitcoin supply on the market. These green patterns represent BTC moving from liquid to illiquid supply and the red patterns represent the inverse of that, BTC moving from illiquid to liquid supply. What this chart is showing is, since 2018, there is more and more Bitcoin becoming illiquid, which means these are the Bitcoins that are not available for sale, predominantly by the long-term Bitcoin holders. Because they just simply take all those Bitcoins of cryptocurrency exchanges and move them to the cold storage wallets. On the other hand, this liquid Bitcoin supply decreases, because most of these Bitcoin are moving to illiquid side, 
addition to that, there is a Bitcoin having which further diminishes the incoming Bitcoin supply. If you add two and two together, you will realize that supply that available for Bitcoin becomes smaller and smaller and demand becomes bigger and bigger. And therefore, we see Bitcoin price surges. No wonder why we are above $50,000. Addition to that, we can take into the account 4 million BTC that most likely were gone forever due to the lack of Bitcoin self-custody knowledge and private key management. The good example of that is of course, Peter Chief, who lost his private key to the Bitcoin that has been donated to him by his followers. So Bitcoin is very scarce asset. If you have at least one Bitcoin, you should consider yourself a lucky person because there is not enough Bitcoin in the world for every millionaire to hold in the same time. Speaking of the Bitcoin coming reduction supply, this is a great chart by chart BTC that represents Bitcoin price movement after each Bitcoin halving. Since the birth of the Bitcoin that took place in January 2009 until the first Bitcoin halving that took place in late 2012, there were 50 BTC produced in every 10 minute block. If you do the math, you will realize that in the first 4 years, half of the entire Bitcoin supply was created. 10.5 million BTC was generated in the first 4 years. And there won't be more than 21 million BTC ever. During those 4 years, Bitcoin price increased from $0 till $12 on the date of the Bitcoin halving. After that date, Bitcoin reward per block dropped from 50 BTC till 25 BTC. And within the next 4 years, there have been only created 5.25 million BTC. And therefore, we can conclude that 75% of all BTC have been created in the first 8 years. The price of BTC increased from $12 till $658 within second 4 year cycle. Then, in the mid of 2016, there was the second Bitcoin having that took block reward from 25 BTC till 12.5 BTC. And during those 4 years, there have been 2.625 million BTC created. And the price increased from $658 till $8,500 in that 4 year cycle. Then on May 11, 2020, there was the third and most recent Bitcoin having that took block reward from 12.5 BTC till 6.25 BTC. In this 4 years window, there will be only 1.312 million BTC generated. So the supply is predictable, and the only thing we know that this asset is very scarce. If asset is scarce, it is highly likely it will be very expensive in the future. In the first year's window, Bitcoin increased literally from nothing till $12. Let's say it increased from 1 cent till $12. So that would be 1200x ROI. Between first and second Bitcoin having Bitcoin increase from $12 till 650 bucks and that would be 54x ROI. Between 2nd and 3rd Bitcoin having BTC increase from 650 bucks till $8,500, and that would be 13x. We can see as Bitcoin supply decreases, there is also massive reduction of rate of returns as the asset becomes more and more mature. It's hard to say where Bitcoin is going to be in the next 4 years, but I will just say one word, NORTH. Now, let's take a look at this most recent video from Michael Saylor where he explains who is the next big buyers that will move a needle in the Bitcoin market. Let's take a look. So I, I think you see uh, an avalanche of publicly traded companies. I mean, there were, you know, there were none 12 months ago and, and now it's one after the other. I think you see a lot of recurring themes and um, uh, as that happens, I think the dam is breaking. This story is broken into the mainstream media since you and I last talked. And you're starting to see stories in Bloomberg and the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the Straits Times and Hong Kong and Ireland and London, the Financial Times. The Financial Times put it on the front page of the, you know, of the paper and the headline was something like, is Bitcoin now going mainstream? And the answer is yes, yes, it is going mainstream. When mainstream papers ask that question on the front page, they're asking and answering the question for you. Here's the dynamic, right? Facebook, <coughs> Apple, Google, <coughs> Amazon. Especially you've got the Facebook, Apple, Google dynamic, right? I mean. Google Android is struggling with iOS. 
Facebook is sitting between the two of them. They've got a, they've all got kind of a uncomfortable love, hate, coopetition relationship. If all three of those companies, those big three, because they're all big and mobile, right? Amazon's the fourth, but especially Facebook, Google, mm -hmm. and Apple. Those three, if they do nothing then Square and PayPal are going to consistently and gradually rip away their accounts. The reason that PayPal moved is they Square forced them to move. Right? When Square moved, PayPal had to move. Now, PayPal and Square are wrestling with this. And it's possible that all three of the, the big three do nothing, in which case Square, that's the best thing that could happen for Square and PayPal, right? But it's not likely... There's that, that phrase, you know, three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Well, I, you know, I, there's three. Okay, you can keep Bitcoin from exploding through the entire mobile space if all three of them agree not to compete with each other. <laughs> I think the hedge funds will move much more aggressively next. The hedge funds were participating. It's like, we have a little bit of this and a little bit of gold. Okay, gold's up 9%, Bitcoin's up 460, 450%. A little, you know, some we got more gold and Bitcoin. That doesn't really work anymore, right? I mean, you got to have your head examined if you're allocating the gold, right? Any rational person that can run a spreadsheet is like, what are you going to do? Well, last year gold didn't work. Let's sell some gold and buy some Bitcoin. So I think you see I think you see the existing hedge fund players double down or triple down. I think you see other other uh, fast money that had ignored this story get in the space. Mm -hmm. They'll move next, um, and they'll move in different ways. I think that it's inevitable you'll see the sovereign wealth funds. They have to move. I mean, they I mean they have infinite money, and if you're if you're an in infinite money, you see the asset class coming, and you see it's the best performing asset class. Your only issue is, are other people with money doing this. If I can point to a hundred billion dollar entities that are doing this, then yeah, I kind of want it. And there's a thousand, probably about a thousand big institutions that are in it right now. So I think 2021 is the year that sovereign wealth starts to, they'll start to dip their toe in it. They'll get in a little bit. And I think some, uh, some more of these hedge funds will move. I think you'll see, you know, the number of publicly traded companies double you know, you had two, then you had four, then you had eight, then you had 16. We'll be marching our way through the teens. But of course, they're not all created equal, right? Because one of them might drop a billion dollars. You'll see $100 million buys, $200 million buys. Maybe you'll see a few billion dollar buys and, and, and not, not clear what happens next, but doesn't matter really. Big tech will move. Uh, the, the hungry tech will move because they're hungry, right? Hungry tech will move. And um, certain players in the, in the system, MasterCard and Visa will accommodate because it makes sense to start to plug in. Like, you know, you, you want to buy a cup of coffee on the Visa network and you're going to plug in a crypto account. They'll accommodate. They'll probably do it under pressure from PayPal and Square, hmm. right? If for no other reason, then why wouldn't you? And I think you already see lots of uh, lots of big pools of uh, silent money, like uh, endowments, pension funds, family offices. Um, they're all rolling in. I mean, I don't know, half the Ivy League universities, I suspect, already own this stuff now. And so they all talk to one another. And as they talk, we'll see that. And then you'll see the you'll see the mutual funds and the and the and the ETFs. Right. I mean, it's it's not the most successful ETF in the history of Canada is the Bitcoin BTCC. You know, I think we'll see an ETF in the U.S. sometime in the next 12 months. It seems inevitable. And uh, you'll see ETF like mutual funds that are accessible, like Skybridge put out one where you can invest for 75 basis points. You'll see you'll probably see some other players amp that up. You have four hundred trillion dollars worth of. M2, broad money cash, stock, commercial real estate, and debt, corporate debt, sovereign debt, and the like. That $400 trillion, monet, that's the outer part of the monetary planet. That's, those are all fiat derivatives. 
they're all cash derivatives. Every currency is correlated to the US dollar. The dollar, if it weakens 15%, drives the weakening of the euro, the, you know, the yen, the yuan, the peso. And then the only question is, do they weak fa weaken faster or slower? And you can go back and debate it. But here's the, here's the fundamental issue, which is you think you have a diversified portfolio, but if 95% of your portfolio is, is 100 different bonds and stocks and whatever, they're not diversified. They're all correlated to one risk. They're all correlated to the currency strength. And so if you really want to have a diversified portfolio, you have to actually buy scarce property, which means I, I would be a bigger advocate for you buying a collection of baseball cards, buy, buy beachfront real estate, someplace you want to live the rest of your life, buy collectibles, buy, you know, buy Bitcoin, buy trophy assets that have a tangible value or commodities with a value and use to you ideally trophies that have a value in use because they're going to appreciate. And if they're, if they're desirable to everybody on earth, if they're true, pure property, then they'll appreciate the fastest. And that means Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the apex property because anybody on earth can benefit from it for the next hundred years. That's why it's going up 400 plus percent this year. But, you know, the Hamptons house went up by 50%. Palm Beach went up 26%. Typical house went up 11%. Big tech went up 47%. I mean, you know, like uh, they're okay, but really at the end of the day, every investor has to decide what is your forecast for the next eight years of uh, monetary policy. And once you crank in that discount rate, that will determine everything else you do at an individual level and a corporate level in order to protect yourself and either preserve shareholder value or create shareholder value, you know, or the like. Michael Saylor reminds you that you have to own an asset that very scarce and Bitcoin is the most scarce asset in the world. Let me know what do you guys think about this current Bitcoin market. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, smash that like button and subscribe for more videos.